Retro Cartoons with John Mark. Hey, it's John Mark and welcome to my series on teaching you how to draw cartoons. Today episode, I have three really fun lessons to share with you. I have this cute little country house and I have a little cartoon snake and I have a little leprechaun. So all three of them come uniquely different and the third one is something special. Hmm, what could it be? You're just gonna have to wait to see at the very end. So if you have your paper and pencil, I think we're ready to begin the first lesson. All right, let's begin the lesson and I'll be using my mechanical pencil and working off of an eight and a half by 11 paper. I quickly just sketched out a little horizon line and then from there I am gonna be working on the house. As you can see, it's in a perspective. So it's like a three quarter view. I'm quickly just framing that house out. And when I'm just working here and using my imagination when playing around with the houses, you may wanna drive around the neighborhood or look in some uh, books and actually see how houses actually look and just stylize it to uh, your style basically. So feel free to change it as well. So what I did is I have a window on the top and two windows on the side and a door here. And what I mean by changing, you may want to change the shape of the actual house instead of square, maybe a little bit more um, letterbox. That's like a, a triangle shape. Feel free to change the shape of the house on the top of the roof. But now I'm just creating the little um, fireplace here and that little two smoke sacks coming on this back side there. And let me just make it a little bit better on that top roof there. You know, let, okay, now, of course, houses also have mailboxes. So I'm going to continue and making a little fun little mailbox in the front. What I want you to really pay attention is this mailbox might look a little larger than what could fit in that door because that is perspective. So the uh, elements closer to you should look larger and the elements further back should look a little smaller. So you don't want to make a small mailbox what I'm actually trying to share. And I just can, can, can see I just added almost the same angle as that house, intentionally doing that so you can kind of say uh, the type of shape that I actually had. I'm, I'm sorry, this is like a little pathway over there. I'm just quickly sketching out. And what do you see on your mailbox? I actually saw like a little flag, but now I'm back onto the fence, the same thing. So the fence that I'm creating right now, so I'm randomly creating these little pillars. And as you get closer, I'm making them a little larger and further back, I'll make them a little smaller. And I just put the background over there quickly right there. And let's, let's change that mailbox. And the lead I'm using is an HB, so it's a little soft. All right, let's con connect the rails now to the um, the fence. As you can see, I'm just working on just one rail at a time. There we go, and the one in the far back there. Not a double rail, but just a single rail. And as you can see, kind of pulls you from the back of the house to coming all the way in the front of the house. That's kind of um, line that uh, creativity wise, that actually pulls your eye to that first one right here and pulls you right around the house. So having something standing out like that is a nice way of uh, grabbing your eye and, and let your eye follow that fence and a little darker there. Shading and I'm going to just create like the, the rail a little bit open there, the back there. That's looking good. I like that. All right, back on the roof. I'm going to go a little heavier on there again. Now this is almost like step two that I normally share at a time to time where I go very quickly with my lead or if I have my blue lead as well. And I'm just creating like the little housing for the uh, the window. That's looking good right now. I like that a little bit like put like a little little cross beam in the middle there. And I'm just going to shade. So that'd be all glass right there. And let's get the bottom. This is going to be like an inside. So a little shading in there. So the window is a little bit further in and just like, all right, the awning on the side there and the bottom. All right, that looking good. A little bit heavier, as you can see. There we go. On the bottom there, this is going to be like really thick. And I'm with a little one over there, a little line there. And this is the inside, so I'm shading that a little bit more. So that's the, the house, the roof, and the house is right here on this side. You can even change the texture of the house. What the texture is it made out of wood, shingle, stone? Uh, I'm just going to leave mine maybe just as a, like if it was made out of like a big plaster Paris or one piece of wood. 
All right, again, the door, I like round doors instead of square. Sometimes square is fine, but in this case, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Let's make it like an oval window right there, like a peek through, shading that inside there a little bit. Now I'm just creating some wood grain, giving some texture to that wood and shading inside that door. And I'll match the underneath the part of that roof there. There's one in the window, there's a two. Let's make it a little thicker and the same thing. There's a little crosshatch window panes in there. All right, there, there. You know, let's get right where the shadow might be. I'm just giving that that's a little shadow indication there. And, and let's make it a little heavier, a little bit shady on that. So yeah, that's looking good. All right. All right, you know, you know what? Let's shade this all the way in a little bit more because that's a little bit sh more of a shadow. So the sun would be coming more from the right-hand side and this would be on the left-hand side where the sun is not hitting. Sometimes you may want to put an arrow or a, or a little light bulb on the area where the light is um, coming down so that you can easily um, remember where the shadow is. A little bit darker there. All right, and again, just just remember, this is just a sketch. Nothing's perfect, 100%. I'm just making little shrubs here. Again, just really, really quick. A little um, English boxwood, maybe. All right, little flower here and there. What's on your garden? How do you see this? Is this in like in a tropic area or is this in like a, a country setting? You can make palm trees or you could turn it into a desert. Uh, or it could be even a cityscape or like an urban where there's more houses next to each other. For me, right now, I'm just making the country. So I'm having a tree in the background really, really quick. The little ovals just to stylize in that part there. That's looking good. A little tree in the background. So you can don't always have them side by side. Have things overlapping. Kind of gives you that depth. All right, another little one here, and that's way in that background there, and I'm gonna shade that one. So there's like a three trees here, two small ones and a big one in the middle. Here's a fireplace, the top. I'm just gonna shade that top part there, again, because of the lighting. I'm figuring it's coming from the far right, and a little bit over here in this little smokestacks. All right, a little darker, as you can see. A little bit darker so now this is again where i go a little harder and i actually have the tone that i like of uh, the pencil so i play around with that little shadow in there okay let's work on that hill you know what let's add another tree in the background a little further away than that first one another one in the distance and i'm just going to shade like halfway underneath around it that looking good i like that oh right let's add another little one in the back you could have like animals in the background if you want to have cows or chickens or pigs, whatever. And let's work on this little mailbox. All right, I'm just going to write U.S. Postal Service. All right, and the flag on the side there. Don't know if the mailman came or not because it's like kind of an angle. But you, hey, you can use your imagination. Leave the mailbox open. Have a whole bunch of letters sticking out there if you want to. Or you can put a, a package next to the mailbox as well, too. All right, I'm just going to shade this in underneath there. The little wooden pole holding it up. And a little bit underneath there, lightly. There we go. All right, a little bit darker there. Look at that. Let the ground. Okay, this is the pathway, as you can see, coming towards you right now. So it's narrow in the front, and it comes wider as it gets again. Again, that's that perspective to lead your eye to the door there. I'm just creating little little bumps here so this is like a dirt pathway yours may be a sidewalk or it could be just like with stone pathways as well and we're going to shade a little bit on the side of the fence here again on the far left that's looking better i like that little grass coming out the side here or rocks here and there randomizing them a little bit here and there all right and a little bit shading for the uh, mailbox, as you can see, the shadowing on there. And okay, let's get the little, little bigger rock here and some grass. All right, that's looking good. I think we're almost done. You know what, let's get some lines in top of that roof there, if it was like shingles. And just give that illusion right now on the top of the awning there. That's looking nice as well. All right, yeah, you know what? Let's change it and make it as if it did have shingles. So I'm just going to go straight across. 
little sh shingles there left and right all right i like that little angling it out kind of gives you that illusion that's on the other side yep i think this is perfect i hope you really practice a little bit with the sketching technique that i did there Hey, now that was a fun lesson on teaching you how to use your imagination and draw that little cartoon house. And what did you learn? A little bit about perspective, depth maybe, you know, you have a foreground, midground, background, maybe the type of scenery you changed, whatever you did, using your imagination and sketching is all that I want to really emphasize on all my episodes. So if you like this lesson, stay tuned Hey, welcome back to my show and teaching you how to draw cartoons. The next lesson is going to be on this cute little cartoon snake. Snake? You know, I'm not a fan too, but you know what? It's going to be a cute one. Use your imagination. What could be different? Maybe you have two or three snakes. Maybe you have changed the shape of the face. Change it to your style, but practicing that light and going a little bit heavier at the next step is what I really want to emphasize on today's lesson. So. If you have your paper and pencil, mm -hmm, I think we're ready to begin the next lesson. I'll be using an HB pencil with a standard 8.5 by 11 paper. So as you can see right now, I'm just sketching out simply the head, a little circle and for the little mouth area. And I have the crosshair, which is great again to remember to help, to help you to know where the eyes, nose and ears. Well, Snakes don't got any ears, but you know what I mean. So I'm working quickly in the back and I'm creating some areas of interest of overlapping the lines. So the lines are not straight connecting to give that movement of a snake's body, as you can see there. And I'll get more in depth with that when I get a little bit tighter and tighter. But right now, let's get back to the little sketching. And this is considered step number one. Let's break out his tongue there I'm going to give a little overlapping curve it's not totally straight just give a little curve a little movement and the eyes I'm going to make him very expression so he's going to be really wide so you can make him angry if you wanted to change it use your imagination as I always share but also I just want to be sharing with you just my technique doesn't have to be your technique you can change it up and be very creative so I just made simple eyes and now I'm coming back there to give a little cheek. I'm going to be coming around here for his mouth and nose and try to give that dimension. I'm going to show with some lines later on to really to give that indication there. Coming back a little harder now, slower with the pencil. Coming back down to the body and giving the outline. So as you can see that this is not that hard, but it is a very interesting perspective you see the front of his face three-quarter shot and then the back going in the distance so the illustration isn't so flat you're giving it some dimension that's something to think about and coming back to get the loop right there in the front on the bottom there the little little buddy snake there and now his belly now this will be a fun thing now watch what I do here the curve I'm going up up but now when I got closer to the bottom I curved a little bit underneath it changing the three dimension right there on his mouth too those curves there that gives that whole dimension so it's not flat lines you're actually indicating the help um, form what the snake actually looks like and as the eyes the top of his eyebrow i'm giving him really big the other eye you barely see because it's a three-quarter view shot shading the top eyebrow because that's on the further side and his cheek there that's his far away cheek and that's this the closer one to us right now let's add some little little freckles on our little snake here coming over across there and you can see how the dimension is this is i can actually see it'd be a real fun to ink and color in now you can put fun patterns on here be creative i'm just making little stripes on there you can put hearts you can make happy faces on there what do you want to or make a, a different pattern all together be creative, I always say. Use your imagination. Don't always copy what you see, but be more standing out. There we go. I'll say, we're going to do a little simple shading. I drop the brush, the, the pencil down, so I get the side of the actual lead, not the front, the tip of it. 
I'm just going to do a real quick little pathway and some background to give some motion and some um, just an interesting area. Let's create some landscaping. Quick little rocks, nothing major or anything. Just giving a little shadows here and there. I'm going to make some grass, big rocks and small grass. Now we're going to have a little foreground mid-ground and the background you'll see so that kind of brings this little into shape this is almost like a one point perspective okay a little quick little rocks over there this is just a sketch nothing nothing more detailed whatsoever quick grass blades really really tall so when i say sketching this is just to help get your thoughts out and if you like what you sketched out you may want to go a little further and create more detail. Like um, one of my other lessons I have is actually bringing it on the computer and coloring it and inking it. That you'll see at another time. But for now, this is just a simple little sketch, little snake. All right, let's color in his little tail there, the tip there. That's looking good. Let's, let's get some more. The stone's a little bit darker. I come down a little harder with my brush, here, my pencil. But I normally don't go very, very hard in the very beginning with the, the pencil. I always go very, very light, and I get a little bit heavier. As always, when we finish our picture, let's sign and date it and share with your family and friends. Hey, you got to admit, that was a cute little cartoon snake, wasn't it? What did you do different? change the expression, maybe your style, or you added some little cute little buddies to hang out with them. Maybe it was a background. Do you learn something about the sketching and did you see how the shape he was in the perspective? All that I want to really teach you is how to draw more and practice using your imagination. So if you enjoyed the first and the second one, wait till you see the third one. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to my show and teaching you how to draw cartoons. Now this lesson of the third and final one is going to be just a little different. If you have a paper and pencil, that's great. But if you have a tablet, a stylus, that's what's different about this one. I actually did it on my computer. So you're not going to see the paper and pencil. You're going to see me drawing on my computer. Well, actually the crosshair you're going to see, not me. But if you are excited on how to learn the techniques, by doing traditionally is key to becoming better to go with digital. So starting on digital before pencil and paper, I wouldn't recommend doing paper and pencil and going digital. That's the way of doing it. So if you're ready, let's begin the next lesson. For this lesson, I'm going to be working off of my stylus and drawing on my computer. All right, so today's lesson, I'm going to be playing around with a little character a leprechaun that's right no not him at all I, I just create this one up myself right now anyways so what you're going to be learning is techniques on sketching now what i just did here is i might have had uh, a model sheet that i worked off of or sometimes i might just use my imagination and just play around with or i'll have several drawings and this could be like the second third or the 50th version of a, a character or, or an illustration I'm working on. There's no rhyme or reason why this has to always be the first one that I sketch. Actually, this was actually like the third one. I was just warming up and trying to figure out what to do. So in this case, I felt comfortable with this one when I was working on it. So this is why I am sharing my third version, not my first. But yes, this was working off of my creativity and what I had in my, in my mind, what a little leprechaun might look like. All right, so as you can see, as I am sketching, and the purpose of the very beginning conversation and the thought was, you may not have any references to work off. So you're gonna to have to play around with your imagination, your creativity. That's what sketching is all about. You really don't know how, like the little nose is. I just angled it a little bit more because of the smirk I'm gonna get. I'm used circular eyes. Well, maybe I could uh, use more uh, bolder eyes or more realistic eyes. Well, I just chose simpler ones right now. It's not right or wrong. But when sketching, not only knowing that this is just a quick thumbnail or a quick idea, it's not the finish yet, it possibly could be the one that you would turn into a final illustration or a product or a storyboard or character or whatever you're working on. And again, when you're doing animation, uh, 
when you're sketching, this is how you get the best style of animation, traditional animation, I say, for 2D, not the 3D. And when you're doing storyboards, they're even sketchier than this. They're just trying to get their point across so that when uh, you're uh, representing your company or if you're doing whatever you're working on, that you can quickly come out with some visualization that uh, you're your thoughts are coming out. So storyboards are sometimes really quick and then they go tighter, of course, and then you have the layout and so forth. There's more to go in that, but not to lose track of the little leprechaun here. All that I'm really sharing is how I am sketching. As you can see here, I have like a, a light and then I'll come back a little heavier. I laid in shapes where uh, blocked in like the little um, uh, clover is on the top of his head is just like ovals and then I'll come back and I'll just turn them more into a shape of a clover So you don't really have to draw that clover right away Just position there because you may like hmm should be a three-leaf clover or a four-leaf clover Well, I chose a three and in that case now I'm working on the little buckle behind his hat and then kind of like that ribbon that's on his hat I could have made his hat really square. I could have made it extremely big and tall or kind of really goofy looking. I could have had a lot more hair on him and move it up. So when sketching, these are the things that you're thinking of. So if it's not the complete version that you like, like this one, for instance, I can say, okay, keep it to the side and redraw it really quickly and change the, maybe the shape of the head, maybe the, uh, the shape of the hat, or even the little pot where the gold is where he's sitting in. So by sketching, you're not locked into a final illustration. You can quickly change that on with another illustration quickly. So you're not spending hours on it. It's like, oh, I did so much drawing on this. I can't change it because I spent so much time on it. As fast as you're seeing, I'm doing it right now. That's how fast I could do multiples. So right now we're looking at almost like, oh, like almost four minutes right now or so that I've been drawing this illustration. But I'm going slower now because I'm trying to find out some more detail and more visualization on the uh, uh, illustration. So like I'm putting more coins in the back, I'm shading them, giving them three dimensional feel to it. I could have had some coins on the bottom falling out. I didn't do that uh, at a rainbow or more clovers on and around the bottom of the pot. Any of these things you can easily do with another sketch. So when you're showing some illustrations, like if you're doing a children's book, you might have to sketch multiple um, samples out just to show your client um, the concept that you're coming out with. So sketching is something I want you to really warm up to and feel comfortable with. And the better the sketching you do, the more practice you get. So sketch minimum 30, 30 plus minutes a day and you'll get better. Whatever you can pick up on. As you can see here, I just threw some background in there, some little bushes and shrubs and just gave the lines in there to give some dimension. Very simple. This is not no final piece of illustration. It's just a sketch. I'm putting something in that little dimensional, add another layer of them in the back. I think... Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Hey, now wasn't that a cute little cartoon leprechaun? What about that little cute little cartoon house, you know? What about that snake? All three of them were uniquely different, but sketching and using your imagination is always what I want you to practice with. My website is jmg-studio.biz. I hope you enjoyed all three of these lessons and have a great day.